Right. Okay, hi, I am live. Hi, it's Elliot, and I'm trying to figure out how to get my screen uh, to not be so bright. I'm doing it off my laptop. Uh, <laughs> looks like I'm in a, in a halo um, in a spacecraft, but I'm not sure why I fixed the lights. But anyway, we'll do it. It kind of gives some mood, mood stuff, whatever you want to say. Anyway, I hope everybody's doing well. It's the 5th of June. Um, and I'm going to put my phone on silent. And um, this week I put down cancer research. And the reason I put that down is one of the major cancer meetings was uh, this past week. I think it finishes up today. Lots of new things going on, some exciting results. Um, and, you know, we, we in radiology we do a lot of cancer imaging, right? We do CT, we do MR, we do PET, we do ultrasound. You name it, it seems that a lot of what we do really is cancer related. Staging cancer, following cancer, detecting cancer. Um, but with not really discovering uh, uh, cures. Now Marty Pomper, of course, in nuclear medicine, did some amazing stuff related to that. So that, that part's, you know, so there is something in that regard. But it's usually outside the realm of radiology and I'm not trying to bring it into the realm of radiology, but I just wanted to speak about some of the stuff I've been seeing lately, and where um, it's gonna be a big impact. One of these is on liquid biopsy. You know, liquid biopsy is exact sciences, it's also Illumina, and there are many other companies developing these MCEDs for looking and early detection of different tumors. Now, the work from exact sciences and Illumina the goal will be to pick up between 50 and 100 cancers with one blood test once a year or once every couple years. Now, it's challenging, of course. One of the things about these blood tests, it picks up cancer when it's small. Initially, it's like cancer, no cancer. Over time, they're gonna get better, and they are getting better saying, okay, it's cancer, but it's esophagus, cancer, but it's pancreas, cancer, but it's lung. In the short term, we uh, are looking to find the primary tumor. And so what we're doing, one of the trials, if you look at what was done before, was CT and then a PET scan, or combining the PET and the CT together in one exam. And that was very good. There's a couple of recent articles published in the last week or two uh, talking about that. Now, one challenge, of course, with liquid biopsy is false positive results. It seems that the 15 to 25 percent false positive is something that we're going to have to learn to deal with. Um, so it's not going to be perfect. Maybe over time it will become more perfect. So, th so imaging is going to play a major role. If you look at the trials that are going to be coming, looking at um, you know these liquid biopsies, if the patient is positive, they're going to get a CT, and then depending on what the CT shows, they're going to get a PET scan. So we're gonna be very involved in the early detection of disease. So we'll know the patient had a positive test, 25% false positive, but 75% true positive. So our job is gonna to be to help find the patient's primary tumor. And in that sense, you know, it's gonna change what we do, and in the future may play a major impact in how we do things differently. And again, that's under sort of the screening idea, but early detection of cancer across a range of pathologies. So that's very exciting. I think many of you who are on this call um, may get involved because the companies that are doing the research need to have many sites around the country, look at a wide range of population. So whether you're in a big city or a small town, uh, they're gonna want your patients to participate. So I think pay attention to that. It's gonna be coming soon. So that, that, that part's very good. Um, other things with early detection of cancer. Uh, as we mentioned last week, I was at NVIDIA a couple weeks ago, 23rd of May to be exact. And of course, one of the things NVIDIA talks about, if you look at Jensen Wang's talk from the other day, or many of the talks from other meetings, and talks from big drug companies, um, the discovery of drugs that were never thought possible 
or the discovery of drugs that are more designed for individual patients or the discovery of drugs in a year rather than 10 years is something that AI is going to play a major role in. AI already is playing a major role. Look at any of the large pharma companies from Genentech to Abby to Lilly, you just name them. They're all going and looking at can they use AI for early drug detection? Also, can they use AI to test a drug? Remember, drug testing is billions and billions of dollars and sometimes it totally fails. Well, can I test the drug faster? More accurately, can I modify the drug? Can I come up with drugs that I never thought I even considered? And as I read in that space, that's one of the things that really is happening. So I think you really need to read about that. Um, pay attention to that because um, it's going to be where things are going. And I think it will affect radiology again for detection, for planning, for trials. And the trials may be shorter and quicker with less patients because a lot of the simulation will be done on the computer, not simply trying to recruit patients, um, which takes forever. Also, it's hard to recruit a wide range of patients. Uh, hopefully, you know, one of the challenges with any trial is getting minority patients, different social type patients. Um, hopefully, with the computer and AI, you'll be able to simulate the entire spectrum of the population and not worry that your specific trial is going to be underrepresented, which even when you try hard is going to always be a challenge and also expensive, time consuming. And we want the drugs now, if patients are sick now, can we do things faster and do things better? We're not looking to speed things up and I'm not necessarily looking at drug company profits. Um, but can we do better for our patients? So that becomes very important. Um, people talk about screening with imaging and cancer screening. A lot's been written or maybe not written, talked about with these MR scans and whole body scans looking for cancer or other findings. You know, the challenge of course is undercalling and overcalling. It's the thing about the worried well. Um, I don't think it's really ready for prime time. I don't think it's something you know, it's basically almost a uh, financial uh, program, not so much a scientific program. Um, a lot of companies are doing it. You know, when you have the recommendations by celebrities rather than by physicians or clinicians, that always will get me worried. And that's, I think, where it is. People do ask me about that MR. For $2,500, you get a screening MR. I don't think it's really the thing you want to be doing. but. Um, you can follow it along and see what happens. Maybe things will change. There's really been no well-published results. You always have a case of this or a case of that. We all know that as we discover things routinely on incidental findings. But um, the number of incidental findings you may be pursuing may be those that aren't important and those can cause the patient harm, grief, and a lot of expense. So with that, I'll just tell you that uh, cancer uh, and drug therapy is changing, it's getting better. We're working hard to come up with drugs that are better, less toxic, reach the marketplace sooner. And again, things like AI and imaging are gonna play a major role in how this happens. And I think as radiologists, as technologists, you need to be paying attention because it's gonna affect you and it's gonna affect your practice. So I think that's very, very exciting. And so with that, I hope everybody has a great day and I'll see you later.